Hey y'all, those of you who like sharp things are in the right place. I'm Jared talking to you from YouTube land. Uh, this is actually my armory and I've got lots of unsh unshod inventory on the wall. Um, but this, what I'm working on right now is some shotting. I, I guess you call clothing for the knives. And, and what I mean by that is sheaths or scabbards. And in Japanese you call them saya. But I can't call them that because this is an American bastardized uh, set of Tonto, Wakasaji, and Katana. So you can't call them that. They're just inspired by the Japanese blades. So anyway, this is my American bastardized Tonto. And it even has this weird thumb jimping on the back. Which is just mostly for looks. And also, if you had to do a power cut and put your hand, left hand or your your support hand on this, then it would be less likely to slip as compared with, um, if I can get one out, oh, that's killed myself, oh, well, there's a smooth spine version, so that's got a nice little crown on it, I don't know what that's called in Japanese, and I don't really need to call it that, but these have a distal taper, so I ground them, or grinded them, what's the right word there, I don't know, I ground them with a, uh, with a grind line that went higher than the spine and then I came back with a file and draw filed them down so I got a, a concentric offset line. So you can kind of see in this photograph that it gets slim more slender as it goes away. So I did that on this Tonto and on on these uh, Wakasajis but the 3V um, katanas I did not because I didn't even know I needed to do that I got two I got this one which was gonna have this is already sold and it doesn't have a distal taper but I have two more and I'm gonna probably try to do a distal taper on those because I've already figured out that I can do one and um, it's just gonna be more metalworking anyway on to the scabbards so I had a couple of uh, different iterations of scabbards this is the first one I made one and it worked and uh, I shipped some out and then I realized after making the rest of these that it was not good enough so then I thought oh maybe I can use a a, uh, a spine spacer all the way to the end of the blade and then I realized oh crap I don't have the right fasteners or they don't make these fasteners anymore and I can't get them so I can't do that so then I had to go back and do like a partial spacer on the spine. But then, wait a minute, where did this come from? Okay, there's hardly anything wrong with this one, but there's something wrong with it and I can't remember. Uh, oh yeah, I know, I remember now. When I tried to rivet this, it ran into the spine, so I had to melt it and I just figured, well, I'm going to make that a little bigger. I was thinking about using little donut spacers on the spine. And then I decided, I don't need any spacers at all back there. So this is the final iteration. And it has a perfect sandwich on the top here. And then it has a full 332nd Kydex edge spacer. Which means, good luck cutting through that if you fall down and go boom while you're running around in the woods. And then this spine spacer on the back... I really just did that because it's uh, a little easier to deal with the last um, rivet when you get back towards the hilt. It's just easier to make things work if you have it flush with the blade instead of detended down in here. It allows you to have a, more, uh, a less of a profile and still do your riveting properly without pinching stuff. Another thing I did differently on this one was I added some material to this hilt zone so that I can put the knife in and then I can push it out with my thumb because I can't really reach that spacer in there and I don't want to make it a spacer bigger than I, than I need to so I just have a little section you can push it off and that's kind of helpful sometimes if you want to be quiet or you don't have the, the sheath secured well enough you can just push it away whereas on this this knife here 
that there's nothing there at all. And the reason that is, is because you got to get your whole hand on it. And it's just a, such a short grip that you don't want to have to put your, to lose, lose any uh, real estate for your hand to reach while you're pulling it out of the scabbard. But you can reach on this one and touch the spacer itself and pull the knife out. All right, so now for mounting. I spend a lot of time figuring out how to carry a knife because I figure it's totally stupid to have a big knife like this if you can't carry it. A sheath design is a whole science on its own and that's why it takes a lot longer for me to put out a, a piece of work than some other guys because I'm putting sheaths and knife into the whole gambit. So standard uh, carry method would be this dual uh, horizontal or vertical belt panel which fits inch and a half wide belts because that's what I have and I don't think it makes a lot of sense to wear a bigger belt unless you're toting some really heavy gear and then it also has these two extra holes drilled at an angle so that you can use a belt clip like these to carry the knife inside the waistband so that everything below these clips which are, which are spaced off with a little piece of fuel hose. Your belt goes underneath the fuel hose and the knife goes inside your pants and your belt goes through these loops. You could do the same thing with some metal clips, but that's just one option. And I've been making these from scratch out of old, out of Kydex, but it would be a lot faster to just buy a clip and I would save some time here in the shop doing other more important things. So that's another option. And then the third option is a mouse clip. So you can go from this hole up to this hole at an angle, boop, or you can go from this hole to that one, at, oh no, not that one, that one, boop. And those line up just right. So you can carry this on your web gear, either, you know, at one angle or the other. So upside down or right side up which could be very handy, mostly upside down. Also, this zone in the hilt area can be used to put a, a thumb strap around, so it would fasten into this. Uh, if you're gonna use the mouse clip, you fasten a little um, piece of webbing and a thumb snap. So that is another option to be able to reach up, pop that snap, click, and then pull the knife out, which would keep it safe while you're upside down hanging from a parachute or something like that. Or doing flips and, and uh, forest parkour with your knife. All right, that's all I have to tell you about the Tanuki and its sheath. And um, that's what I've been up to lately. Last, well, like I said, several iterations and dealing with CNC machines and trying to get the molds right. And now I'm gonna go make a batch of them so I can replace all these ones I did before. And then these will all be ready for for new homes. All right. Uh, I've got a few with smooth spines and a few with the uh, curvy spines, like this one. And there are wakasajis to go with them. All right, ta-ta for now.